half past noon, immediately after the close of our last episode. But the little girl, kneeling on the sidewalk in front of her house, doesn't notice the brilliant winter sunshine. Dolly Grant is crying bitterly. <laughs> you see, Dolly has been thrown into the middle of something she's too young to understand. A deadly game of greed and gossip and treachery. Despite her bewilderment and hurt during the time she and May Grant were held prisoner by Marcel Blunt, at least Dory had May with her to protect her. But now, May is legally imprisoned, charged with murder. And the unthinking cruelty of people is just about too much for a five-year-old girl to face alone. No, she doesn't notice the sunshine, nor the taxi pulling to a stop in front of her house. She doesn't notice the young man who steps out of the cab. Nor does she hear his steps approach her. No. You sure? I'm not. Well, I'm all right. Come on, cut it out, baby. Come on, come on, stop it. It can't be that. Oh, now, listen, nothing is that serious. What happened? You break a doll or lose your jacket? Or... No. And what's the trouble? I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. Falling your eyes out and you don't know why? Lord. Hmm? You can't eat. No, 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 stay down there. I'll squat beside you. It's yeah, easy for me to come down to your level. I don't know. Are you... Me? My name's Jake. Oh. Now, hold still. What? My handkerchief. I'll hold it. You blow. Oh. Come on. We'll use teamwork. I'll hold it. And now, blow it. Harder. And how you think you can talk to me? Thank you. Sure. My name is Dory. I thought so. You know my name? Well, I know a little girl named Dory lives at this address. Oh. Did you come to see me? Well, not exactly. I, I came to see Mr. Mason. They told me he was supposed to be here. Mr. Mason was true. Come have lunch with me. Hey, is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mr. Cutter from the kitchen fixing lunch now. I've been hanging out in front waiting for them. Mm-hmm. So what happened? There's Gloria here. Who's Gloria? She's Bobby Hogan's sister. Yeah. She's a little girl. I mean, she's bigger than me, but she's a little girl. <laughs> she wouldn't have to be very big to be bigger than you. Oh, well... You, you think I'm too little to play jacks, too? Oh, well, no. I don't think I'd go as far as to say that, It's but... what Gloria said. And? And, and she said... Oh, here, here. Don't, don't start that again. She said I was a dirty little girl. What? She said I was a dirty little girl. Was that anything to cry about? She didn't mean dirty like it's a dirty plane. Oh. She said that her mama said I was a dirty little girl. Oh. Gloria said her mama said she couldn't play with me. I see. She said Gloria said her mama said my mommy was bad. I get it. She can't play with me. I pushed her. Gloria stayed in it. She said my mama was there. I pushed her. Yeah? Well, good for you. I didn't hurt her. Listen, this Gloria. She claims that you're too young to play Jack? Yes. I don't believe it. Well, I can play a little bit. Here. Here's all five of them. You show me. Will you play with me? If you'll teach me. <gasps> I don't know how to play Jack at all. You don't? Nope. <laughs> Big as I am, I don't know how to play jacks at all. So, if you can play a little bit, you can play a lot more than I can. Well, take all of you. My fist, see? Mm-hmm. And when you slow them up, try to catch them on the back end. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I didn't catch but two. You have to catch them on the back end. Mm-hmm. And then take the ripple and bounce it. And take a point of jacks before I bounce it. Hey, hey, you did it. That's called onesie. Yeah, and uh, what comes after onesie? Pretty. Mm-hmm. And then you ride the elephant and ride the horses in the stalls. <laughs> drive the horses in the stalls. It sounds funny, but it's fun. Well, can you do drive the horses? Well, uh-huh. Uh huh. 
Hello, Mrs. Holden. Mrs. Jake. Jacobson, Mrs. Holden. I'm sure. I'm going to speak to Mrs. Cody about you, Dorothy. Oh? I'll also say Mr. Grant knows what you did. Oh, Mrs. Mr. What's the trouble, Mrs. Holden? Who are you, Mr. Jacobson? A friend of that family? I'm a newspaper man. Oh. Oh. Then, of course, you understand. I shouldn't be surprised at any of her actions, knowing her environment, living with a murderer. You mean this kid? I do. Do you know what this little savage just did? Oh, something terrible, I'm sure. She attacked my little Gloria. This Gloria, she's a baby? What? Certainly not. Gloria is seven years old. I see. So, uh, this great, big, hulking five-year-old beat up your kid? Gloria was skating. Dorothy pushed her down. I see. You should see the bruise on Gloria's, <clears throat> on her back. She said my mommy was bad. She is bad. Oh, She's a low, vicious criminal. The papers are full of it. Not all of them. What? Don't tell me you're defending that little criminal. You've got it. Well, after all that's come out about her. You mean Mrs. Grant? She's a disgrace to a decent law-abiding neighborhood. Can you prove it, Mrs. Holden? What? Let me tell you something. If you were on skates, I'd be tempted to push you down. Sure. Spreading gossip, malicious gossip, and rumors. Picking on this defenseless little kid. Gossip? Rumors? The papers have the facts. And if you're a newspaper man, you know that they wouldn't dare say what they do if it wasn't so. Now, listen. The papers print news. They print what's been said. They don't guarantee it. It's up to you to pick out and decide for yourself what's right and what's wrong. If you weren't so busy rushing around to read carefully, you would have seen what it said. It is alleged, and it is reported. And prosecutor Frederick Apt was quoted to say... I don't need you to tell me. Now, maybe not, but... All I want is for this little savage to be punished for losing my little warrant. Now, listen. Your little Gloria comes and picks on this baby while I'm here. I'll personally see to it that she gets bruises on her bruises. Well, and not from the sidewalk. Well, I'll, I'll tell my husband. Yeah, yeah, do that. Have him come over, too. And remember, your little Gloria isn't good enough to set foot in this yard. Now, his father and mother don't want to contaminate it. Oh. And if you want to know why, start reading the Daily Blade for a change, lady. Oh, gee, what you said. What? Oh. I must have lost my temper. Mrs. Holden turned all red. Yeah. She did. She, she looked so... Oh, that was true. It was amazing. Well, look who's here. Jerry. Hello. Hello, Hello darling. Jerry. Hello, Dory. Hello, Dick. Stop, Dory. I get a big hug? Oh, yes. Thank uh, <laughs> you. What are you doing here, Jerry? Oh, drumming up subscriptions for the Daily Blade. What? Oh, let me tell you what you said to Mrs. Holden. Now, wait, baby. I've, I've got something to tell him first. All right. Well, I, um, came out here to tell you the deal was off, Mr. Mason. I was going to kill that story knocking to Carlo. Yes? But, Dory and I got to talking, and Mrs. Holden and I got to talking. Well, the deal's back on. Good. Oh, Jake, I'm so glad. No, don't, don't give me any credit. It was all to Dory. This sweet kid. Yes, I know. This is a dirty business. It's a tough, rough game. A kid like her is too young to know there aren't any rules, much less to know the score. I guess I'm big enough to run a little interference for it. Good for you, Jake. Jake, we can have lunch with us, too. Would you like to have him? Oh, yes. I'm teaching him how to play Jack. Oh, that's nice. Do you have any little girls, Jake? Um, uh, I don't know, Dolly. You don't know? No, it's too soon. I mean, uh... Look, kid, that's, that's an entirely different thing. Even if I don't know the score of that... Uh, not to change the subject, Jake, but shall we go in and see about lunch? I can use the phone to call my wife <laughs> and tell her she was right. <gasps> and so Perry Mason's plan is going through. His plan for Jake to get to know Kitty DiCarlo... His plan for attacking in order to save May Grant's life. We'll learn whether or not the first and all-important step is successful in our next episode. So, by all means, be sure to join us on Monday. Uh-oh. Hello. Helen? Sarah! Hi, you busy? Well, in a way, I was just getting ready to go to the doctor. Oh, Oh, it's nothing serious. A routine checkup. Oh, then I won't keep you for more than a second. Oh, I'll make it two. You won't care if I take five. 
I want to tell you you're married to a real swell guy, Helen. Oh, well, now, what do you want? <laughs> when Perry told Jake what he wanted to do, that husband of yours came through like a little soldier. Jake's got on the story. But did you ever buy the word? Well, I'm not married to him, so I wouldn't know, but I can say this. It takes a lot of courage. Oh, but if it works, Helen, if Jake's call and makes our dear friend Kitty to call him mad enough... If that happens, then little Helen will be sitting at home while her husband tries to make time with us. Oh, Helen, I... But don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. My contribution to a better world. The world my kid will be born in. The world Jake's kid will be born in. I know he has a big thing of it, but... He said things the same down the school, little drops of water make an ocean. So if everybody makes a little contribution, maybe sometime we'll have a good world. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Yeah. Well, you listen to us, Bella. Yes, I've been listening, and I think we're just friends. <laughs> Uh-oh, Perry's calling in. You should see the scowl on his face. Make a face back at him to me. Okay. I did. But I have to go. Oh, I think I hear my wandering boy at the door, so I have to go, too. Well, what's this doing? Huh? No. Oh, bye. Bye, Bella. Jake? Yeah, I'm glad you're home, baby. Oh, this is a nice surprise. Huh? I told you to Bella. Oh, yeah? Well, you should hear the nice things she had to say about you. Jake, I hate to say hello and goodbye and then run, but I've got an appointment for the doctor at 11.45. Come, come back to the bedroom. Talk while I put my hat on. Is that nice, Jerry? What, uh, what Bella have to say? No, 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 no. We're proud of you, Jake. Both Stella and Mr. Mason. And so am I. Before I started my new career, I used to be a reporter, too, so I appreciate what you're doing. Well, say something. I'm not going to run the story, Helen. No. What did you say? I wrote the story, just like Mason wanted it. Chief called me. Jerry. Now, listen, Helen, Art's right. Jeez. Every paper in town is playing for Mason to lose. I'd be sticking my neck out like an ostrich if I let the column go the way I wrote it. Jeez, all of us know you were taking the chance. Well, I can't afford to have my neck chopped off. Not now. Not not with you the way you are. You forget about me and do what you think is right. Helen, I am doing what I think is right. I'm pulling in my horn. Huh? I've got my family to think about first, Helen. What now. about me, Grant, and her family, Jake? What about Barry? Barry's not my kid. I've got to think about my kids. Oh, that's not the way to play it, darling. Mm, so good. Because now you are acting like an ostrich, sticking your head in the sand. Oh, boy. You know, it's nothing of the sort. You're smart, Jake. You're smart enough to understand, but if you're scared to stand up for what you think is right, you're a coward. Helen. It's the truth. Listen, I'm thinking of you. I'm a kid, you're going to have if I lose my job... You're thinking of Jake Jacobson. I'm not asking you to think of me. The baby we're going to have isn't asking you to think of him. Not that way. He's a lose. I... Well, Jake, if you don't help that little girl, you'll be cheating our child, too. Oh. You will. Oh, Jake. Jake, you live better. Helen, I can't help it. I'm letting Terry Mason down. You'll be letting us down, too. I can't help And oh, darling, by letting her down, you... By letting her down, you'll be letting our baby down, too, Jake. But what do you think Mr. Mason will say? Oh, help All right. All right, it's your business, Jake. I won't say any more. Yeah, but I... Oh, I don't... I don't feel like talking. Helen. I'm all right. Come on, just a little busy. Oh, yes, yes. Let me help. Come on, sit down with that knife. Do you want, you want some water or something? Oh, no, no, no. I don't want anything. Now, uh, Helen, look. You're getting this all out of proportion. Am I, Jim? You've got sense, honey. Use your sense. It all comes down to looking out for yourself. Dog eat dog. Well... As long as my family's okay, that's all that counts, huh? Helen, you're not trying to understand. I'm just a little guy. I, I... I don't like the kind of world you think it is. Huh? You didn't used to think the dog-eat-dog -dog world was best either. And you didn't used to be a little guy. I know the world can be mean and, and cruel and vicious. Both of us have seen it. We've seen how cruel it can be to children. 
You remember last Christmas Street? We had a date for dinner. You saw that kid outside the restaurant. You and I ate hamburgers that night because you gave her all the money you had. You weren't a little guy then. You weren't a helpless guy then. You were a big guy to that youngster. Okay, maybe it was nonsense. Maybe it was sentimental. But we felt that helping one child for just a little while was helping make a, a better world. A better world for us all. That made us feel good, too. Helen. But that poor kid must be going through, especially after what's been printed in the papers. Jake. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Because I'm very sorry. Very sorry, Jake. I've got to finish dressing now. Going to the doctor. Me, I would just tell him who's going to change in plans. Go on. Go on, Jake. Go tell Mr. Mason what you're going to do to make the world a better place for your kid to live in. Now I throw the ball up. Oh, maybe catch but one chair. Now, first I do one. Bounce and grab. And bounce and grab. And, oh, I knew it. I'm a little fun playing jokes for myself. Gloria! Oh, Gloria! What are you doing? I'm playing jokes. It's too little to play jazz. I was trying to play. It's too little. I've got roller skates. It's fun. Of course it's fun. I'm going to stay and stay, but I won't even go back to school. I don't like to. I wish I could go to school. It's too little. I know. Too little to play jack. Too little to have roller skates. Too little to go to school. Oh, yes. Yeah. You show me how to play jack. My mother was learning me, but she had to go away. My mother's me. Oh, no. You're big. You could show me. No, I couldn't. Oh. I can't play with you. You dirty little girl. Oh, you're a dirty little girl. Don't you call me that. You're too, you're not too. You're a dirty little girl, a dirty little girl. Hey, I'm not. You are, because my mama says you are. My mommy says you are mean, then you are mean. You never got a mom. Don't put me My mama's in jail. She's in jail. She locked her up because she's bad. She's not, she's not. My mommy is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, so bad. And they locked her up, and there are snakes in there. And they'll make her stay with them. And they'll just say that. Don't you up. Children can be cruel because they don't think. But actually, you could blame Gloria's mother for Gloria's cruelty. For it's up to Gloria's mother to set her the right example. Just like it's up to Jake Jacobson to do his part. Only it looks as if Jake plans to duck his responsibility. But be sure to join us tomorrow.